before I get into Job 5, Job 18, Job, Job 20, remember they're changing my voice, and I want to say that it hurts me logically, you know, when I think of the logic, right, regardless of emotions, because they've damaged my brain to some degree, to have to chastise people, you know, it saddens me to have to highlight certain groups, you know, I wish the white Jew and LGBT community would have come to me um, instead of obeying the corporate state, instead of coming to persecute me, okay? I did not want this to go this way. When I'm angry, sometimes I might say something that suggests that I wanted to go this way. I can't remember if I've said something like that because there's a part of me that the th at the thought of a rebel group of people, you know, that it's like, give me an excuse kind of thing. But that's that's not the majority of me. The majority of me is the most loving person uh, that you, you'll ever hear of, ever, you know. All right, so let's get to Job 5. Call, if you will, but who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? Resentment kills a fool and envy slays the simple. I myself have seen a fool taking root, but suddenly his house was cursed. His children are far from safety, crushed in court without a defender. The hungry consume his harvest, taking it even from among thorns and the thirsty pant after his wealth. For hardship does not spring from the soil, nor does trouble sprout from the ground. Yet man is born to trouble as surely as sparks fly upward. You might think this is a little bit confusing, but okay. So what's going on here? We're at Job 5, okay, and... They're talking about what happens to wicked people. So Job is talking to various people like Bildad, the Shuat, uh, Zophar, the Nemathite. And they're trying to comfort him and trying to, they're trying to argue with him. He's basically saying that God has struck him down and he doesn't understand it. Right, God, God has afflicted him with all these hardships. Right, his family members are dying, his his cattle, his flocks, his herds are being taken from him. He's being raided. Okay, Satan behind the scenes has convinced God to test Job, whose name must be a play on words for job. And we'll get to that. Right, it comes with the territory. And so, as he's trying to explain, and as they're discussing this, certain things come up, like what happens to the wicked person. Okay, it says resentment kills a fool and envy slays the simple. Okay, wickedness in Proverbs says wickedness overthrows the, the sinner. Okay, these things are true. Almost all of Job is true, but some of it is where the people arguing with him are a little bit off, but not in regards to what happens to the wicked. The authors of the Bible took the time, you know, in the Old Testament, they took the time to make it clear that wicked people are fools who end up in trouble and they're talking about it spiritually speaking first okay they say the hungry consumes his harvest taking it from even from among the thorns and the thirsty pan after his wealth so the wicked person you know his spiritual harvest the lasting pleasure from truly making the right decisions in life the things that God set aside for him if he did the right thing are being consumed they're being taken from him. Okay? So, again, ask questions in the comments. It's a bit confusing. So, again, it says, Resentment kills a fool and envy slays the simple. I myself have seen a fool taken root, but suddenly his house was cursed, right? His family, his house spirit, his family spirit, his group spirit. His children are far from safety, crushed in court without a defender. Does that mean every rich, wicked person or every wicked person goes to court and, and, and their kids go to court and they, they get locked up forever? No. Okay, it's crushed in the court of... The most high. The hungry consume his harvest, taking it from among thorns and the thirsty pant after his wealth, right? His harvest of righteousness and justice of, and of joy from being a wise person. He doesn't have it. For hardship does not spring from the soil, nor does trouble sprout from the ground. Yet man is born to trouble as surely as sparks fly upwards. Okay, so when you're building something, you know, you're, you know, and you're hitting metal on metal and sparks fly upwards, then man is born to trouble as surely as sparks fly upwards. And hardship does not spring up from the soil, nor does trouble spark from the ground, right? It, it, it comes upon him. 
But if I were you, I would appeal to God. I would lay my cause before him. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. He provides rain for the earth. He sends water on the countryside. The lowly he sets on high and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He thwarts the plans of the crafty so their hands achieve no success. Now this is a profound martial art principle. In nowhere in life, no pursuit in life is it more obvious than martial arts. Okay, because a lot of people are confused by their careers, by their fancy diplomas and things that they've worked, albeit hard for to some degree, in a sense, at least. Okay, they don't quite understand why the craft, right, being crafty, right, to snake someone, to be crafty, a cunning and crafty snake, the most crafty of the animals, right, in Genesis, right, why the plans of those who aren't in the divine order, because they're trying to snake to cheat the righteous so they can get the women and the money, right? Have no true success, right? Because God thwarts the plans of the crafty so their hands achieve no success. For the Buddhists and, and these other people who, who don't believe in one God, or at least not the Christian God and whatever religions they come from, other people, okay? They know that for whatever reason, the wicked don't achieve true success, right? They don't come into a spirit of true purity, and justice and righteousness, okay? He catches the wise in their craftiness and the schemes of the wily are swept away. Darkness comes upon them in the daytime at noon. They grope as in the night. He saves the needy from the sword in, the, in their mouth. He saves them from the clutches of the powerful. So the poor have hope and injustice shuts its mouth. Blessed is the one whom God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. Now again, Let's say he says he saves them from the clutches of the powerful. So are poor people and innocent people saved from the clutches of the powerful? Was John the Baptist? Was Jesus? No, no. Was Jeremiah and Amos? Was Samson? No, no, and no. Righteous people and, and often poor people, they're not saved. Not by the flesh. They're saved in terms of the spirit. They're saved from being brought down to the realm of the dead, which is what Job is about and Job and Job are connected, following God, whether you're the least in the kingdom of heaven following God, or you're the greatest. Okay? Misery to you is not being righteous. And this is key. If you understand my understanding of this, which is pure and true, you'll know I'll never sell out. I will never sell out. Why? It has to do with Job 5 and 18 and 20. And why is it stupid to move against me? It has to do with how it affects you and your groups and your families and your children who you leave your inheritance to. We'll get to that. I'm going to have to do this in several parts. Okay. So he saves the needy from the sword in their mouth. He saves them from the clutches of the powerful. So the poor have hope and injustice shuts its mouth. Blessed is the one whom God corrects so... Do not despise the discipline of the Almighty, for he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but he, his hands also heal. From six calamities he will rescue you, and seven no harm will touch you. Now again, you have the seven bowls in Revelation. The seven seals in Revelation. You have the seven trumpets, the seven churches. This word, The number seven is key, and it, it, this is directly drawn on from Revelation, right? What is your job what is your test? Okay? Job is being tested. What is your test? See, God, you know, he harms, right? But he heals. Okay? He wounds. He binds up. He injures. He heals. Okay? He puts you through life's tests. When you go to the gym and you work out, I have to make this example, and your muscles burn, right? Your body's being broken down. That's the way of nature. When you see it in nature, you can't then turn around and say that it's unfair to God Almighty, who is the essence of justice, the source of justice, who is all good, all knowing, and all powerful, who is God. You can't say, hey, why is this happening to me? That's the main thing Job does wrong. That's how Job ends. He, 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 he's questioning why it's happening, and he's saying, he's subtly saying it's unfair, but he's not saying it's unfair. Okay, he is and he isn't, right? When he says that God has wronged him, it's like he's complaining. He's not, he's not accusing God. He's saying God is fair and just and righteous. There must be something wrong here. What have I done, right? He's panicking, right? All right, there we go. 
In famine, he will deliver you from death, and in battle, from the stroke of the sword. In famine, he will deliver you from death, and in battle, from the stroke of the sword. How? If I go to battle with 200 people right now as the top martial arts ever, and I whip out my sword, and I masterfully start cutting them down, and I start getting tired after 20 or 30, 40 of them, okay, I start getting really tired, and I eventually get killed, did God save me from the sword? Yes. How? Because all victories are in principle. If you read this as a cult of the flesh Satanist, are you going to miss the point? Yes. You have to know that all victories are in principle and in obedience to God and the divine order. That's how he saves. The Messiah, the Savior, the top martial artist. That's why the sword, they talk about the sword of the mouth and the sword of battle, the stroke of the sword, right? They, they go into detail. It is the essence of the idea, the essence of the idea of the sun, the spiritual source of it, the spiritual source of a martial art blow, right? Spirit and spearing something, S-P-E-A-R, okay? To spear, spear fishing, a spear, a, a warrior's weapon, right? It is the essence of of the righteous man strike, right? His fighting spirit, his warrior spirit. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name, okay? It's also why they changed my voice to try to make it so it sounds corny. But this is the truth. Even if, you know, that's why I upload it anyway. I say, hey, you know what? I'm telling them they're changing my voice. If they don't know they should listen to this and, and discuss it, if they don't know who I am, and, you know, when I clarify what they're doing wrong, okay, then they're just, you know, their heart is just evil. You will be protected from the lash of the tongue and need not fear when destruction comes. You will laugh at destruction and famine and need not fear the wild animals, which has to do with people, right? They're referring to, you know, the lash of the tongue, the words, right? Not someone literally lashing with their tongue and they're referring to, you know, the people have accepted the mark of the beast, right? They don't have the wisdom to be a human, to have their humanity, to be fair to God and to God's son and to the holy and to obey God and be holy and just and righteous and godly. For you will have you will have a covenant with the tones of the field. Hmm, with the tones. Uh, uh, it must be a typo. With something of the field. And the wild animals will be at peace with you. You will know that your tent is secure. You will take stock of your property. And find nothing missing. It must have been stones of the field. Okay, You will know that your children will be many and your descendants like the grass of the earth. You will come to the grave in full vigor like seeds gathered in season. We have examined this and it is true. So hear it and apply it to yourself. So again, let me just hit you with the, the children's scripture and we'll get to the other two in, in the next uh, video. Okay, so you see how it talks about how their children are far from safety when they're wicked, right? They're crushed in the, in the court of God Almighty, in the court of those who have sense. When a woman who has value looks at the wicked, she doesn't want to date him. She's not going to date him. She's going to rather die than date him and marry him and so on and so forth, okay? Versus the righteous, they're spiritual children. We see in Galatians 4, more are the spiritual children, right? The children of the woman who's in the new Jerusalem in the sky with God than people who are multiplying here. And the people who are multiplying here are of the devil. That's what Galatians 4 is about, you know, written by Paul, who is a Jew, Okay, who converted to Christianity, okay, and, and, and he used to serve the Roman Empire and hunt Christians. Okay, so here we have in Job 18, it says the wicked, right? He has no offspring or descendant among his people, no survivor where he, once he lived. People of the West are appalled at his fate. Those of the East seized with horror. Surely such is the dwelling of an evil man, such is the place of one who does not know God. So he has no living, uh, no, no children who are right with God, who have the spirit of God, right? It says in James the body uh, without the spirit of God is dead, right? They're like a vampire or zombie in a sense. They're the walking dead, the undead. They have that kind of without God way about them, you know, using mere psychology like they do in church and, and propaganda instead of the spirit of God. Okay. So in Job 20, okay. Hmm. I think I might have missed what I wanted to put this here okay it says his children must make amends to the poor his own hands must give back his wealth okay so in one of these scriptures it says you know one of these chapters of Job's it says that, that you'll look at him okay and you'll look at him and his children and say where are they right because all you see is somebody who's been made evil right the humanity is gone okay so it, it makes it clear in Job that I'm right to interpret it that way 
Okay, so here in Job 20 again, his children must make amends to the poor, his own hands must give back his wealth, right? His spiritual wealth. So they, they can't be right with God without a redeemer. How do you make amends without a redeemer? Well, I'm out of time.